Hey FBC kids and welcome back to Unbelievable and also happy Valentine's Day. This month we're talking about the unbelievable miracles of Jesus. Now last week we had some fun with unicorns and we played some fun games but we also learned the most important part of our story that Jesus healed a man who was sick and we learned that Jesus and God care about us when we're sick. Today we are going to talk about a pretty unbelievable story, but let's get started with some music and dancing first. Praise, I'll praise, I'll praise. 
Okay, um, do you guys know the game Would You Rather? It's where I tell you two things and you have to pick which one you would rather do. Most of the time, n neither option is fun. So I'm gonna give you some not fun things. In fact, it's gonna be about fears, okay? So, would you rather step on a spider with bare feet or sleep with a worm on your pillow? Oh, I can't even pick, they're so gross, gross, gross. Okay. Whew. Would you rather run into a lion's cage or swim with sharks? Those are both scary too. But one day I would actually like to go swimming with sharks, but I would like to be in the cage and the sharks in the ocean so that they can't get to me. Okay, would you rather have the power go out at night so everything was dark, or would you rather sit outside in a storm? Would you rather ride on a roller coaster or a pirate ship? I've actually been on a roller coaster and I'm always scared every time I go on them. Even if it's the same one I've already been on, I'm always scared. I don't think I've been on a pirate ship yet. I'm gonna have to do that. Okay, would you rather have no phone or no TV? Would you rather find a frog in your pocket or a beehive in your closet? What about, a, <laughs> would you rather eat a booger or sneeze out milk? Those are both super gross. Okay, would you rather fight a fire-breathing dragon or be a fire-breathing dragon? Sometimes we're afraid of things that aren't even real, like monsters and fire-breathing dragons. We all have things that scare us. Some things are silly, like Miss Julia doesn't like roller coasters, and some are really real fears. We're gonna hear a story today from our Bible about a time when Jesus help the disciples when they were afraid, and how Jesus reminds us that God is always with us, especially when we're afraid. So let's see if our friend is ready with our big idea. Go say hi. Jesus cares about us when we are afraid. Have you ever been on a boat before? Today's story is about Jesus and his disciples being on a boat and something kind of scary happened. Should we figure out what it is? Good idea. Let's go to Mark chapter four and we're gonna start with verse 36. Mark is in the New Testament, which means it's towards the back of your Bibles. And the New Testament starts with Matthew, Mark. Perfect, we got right there. Mark chapter four, verse 36 to 41. So Jesus is by this lake shore, okay? And this large crowd of people are following him around because they can't get enough. He is teaching them, he is spending time with them, and this is just amazing. So they don't wanna leave, right? I'm pretty sure I would be right there with all those people just listening to everything Jesus had to say. He's giving them parables, which are stories that have a lesson, just like we read them today now because he was teaching for us all those years ago to learn our lessons too. So 
he's by this lake and a large crowd is there, right? And he gets on a boat actually to go out into the lake so that everyone can hear and see him and learn these amazing lessons. So we're gonna go over to verse 36, okay? Actually starts with 35, sorry. So evening time comes, okay? We're gonna start with verse 35. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and they started out leaving the crowds behind, although some other boats followed. But soon, a fierce storm came up and high waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Now, do you know anything about boats? Is the water supposed to be inside or outside? It's supposed to be outside. So this is not a good situation, right? Let's keep reading verse 38. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat and his head was on a cushion. The disciples woke him shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Jesus woke up. He rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped What? and there was a great calm. Then he said to them, why are you so afraid to the disciples? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Do you remember last week's miracle that we talked about? It was something that only God could do. He healed the leper, right? So what miracle did Jesus do in this story today? He calmed the storm and those disciples were so scared, right? Now during the storm, those disciples wondered if Jesus cared about what was even happening to them. Why do you think Jesus was asleep for the storm? It wasn't because he didn't know or he didn't care what was going to happen. It was because he knew everything was going to be okay. He was under control. After all, he is God. Jesus didn't stop the storm from happening, but he never left his disciples in the midst of the storm. He helped them by calming the storm. With this miracle, Jesus showed his disciples that he was all powerful, right? Just like the disciples said in the end of the verses, who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? And throughout the entire story, Jesus shows us that he cares when we're afraid, right? He didn't leave disciples alone. He didn't tell them they were being silly or wrong. He simply said, don't you trust me? Silence, be still. He's in charge. He knows what's going to happen. And when we're afraid, just like those disciples were, we can remember the story and we can trust that Jesus is always with us, just like he's always with those disciples, right? God will always give us comfort, strength, and courage when we're afraid. I don't know about you, but if I were on that boat, I would have been just as scared as the disciples. Do you remember why those disciples were so scared? That's right, because they were on a boat in the middle of a big storm. It's kind of a scary thing. You remember, it said that the water was inside the boat. That's not where it's supposed to be. I was recently on a boat trip and I was the captain, which meant I was in charge of taking care of everybody. And I'm so glad there was no bad weather because that would have made me so nervous to be on a boat in the middle of a storm. Not cool. Um, just a side note, how cool is it that Jesus could control the storm by saying, silence, be still. And guess what the storm did? It stopped. How amazing is that? Now I want you to play a little game where you are going to pretend to be the storm and I'm gonna tell you to be still. So you can pretend to be wind. Here comes my wind sound, ready? You can pretend to be rain. Bloop, 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 bloop. How's my rain sound? Okay, if you thought that was bad, wait for the thunder sound. Ba-boom! Ba-boom! It's pretty silly, right? You can pretend to be some of the waves from our story. <laughs> Scary waves. Um, how about some lightning? Zap, 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 zap. Okay, here's my circular tornado sound. Ready? <laughs> Don't forget to spin. Tornadoes need a good spin. Okay, what about snow? I always imagine snow being really quiet. We don't have snow in Florida, so I'm not really sure what it sounds like. Okay, so 
Are you ready? I'll put some music on. You guys be your storms and I'm going to tell you to be still. Now remember, you got to freeze because that's what the storm did in response to Jesus. Okay? Three, two, one, go. Be still. Okay, go again. Be still. Okay, let's go one more time. Here's my thunder. Kaboom. 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 I'm very scared. And be still. Okay, how did you feel whenever when you were running around being a storm? It wasn't very calm or you weren't being very still, right? It was probably a little chaotic and Imagine if we were all doing that in the same room together. It might even be a little scary with all those noises and everybody spinning around. Jesus helped the disciples in the storm because he cares about us when we're afraid, just like our big idea reminds us, right? Is there anything that you're scared of or maybe you want to ask Jesus to help you with? Okay, so we're going to end with a prayer in just a few minutes, and I want you to think about those things, okay? And I am going to be praying for you to have a little help or maybe to have a little courage and strength from God, Okay. Uh, how about some questions first? We haven't done discussion questions in a while. Why were the disciples so afraid on their boat? Because they were in a boat in the middle of a storm. Um, what was Jesus doing during the storm? He had a little cushion in the back. He was taking, taking a little rest. He was spent the whole day teaching people about some awesome ways to live their lives. Um, what did the disciples do when they were so scared? Who did they go talk to? They talked to Jesus. They woke him up. They shouted at him. Um, what did Jesus do in response to them? He woke up. He said, do you still not have faith that everything is under control and that I am God? I added a couple extra words. And he turned to the storm and he said, silence, be still. Right? Um, how do you think the disciples felt after Jesus calmed the storm? I think they were probably a little amazed, right? They even asked themselves, who is this man that even the wind and the seas obey him? I think that's pretty cool. We have a memory verse for this month, and I'm sorry I didn't mention it last week. This is one of my favorite verses, and it's right here down here. And it's from Jeremiah 29, 11. And I love this verse because it helps me remember that even in the scary times, God has a plan for my life, okay? And it tells us, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, this is one of my favorite verses, like I said, because not only does God have a plan for our lives, but this plan is to help us prosper. That's to grow, to flourish, to have great choices in our lives, to have great experiences, to give us hope and a future. That means God's plan for our lives is not going to leave us alone, scared in the dark, or on a boat in the middle of a storm. He's got great plans for us to lead great lives. Now, remember when I asked you if there was anything you maybe were scared of or you needed help with? Okay, now's a great time to think about that. And when we're praying, you could even ask God to help you with those things, to give you strength and courage to face a scary or tough situation. Or maybe if you just need a little bit of help, now's a great time to ask God for it, okay? I'm going to be praying for you, but maybe you could be praying for some people in your life too at the end of our prayer. Ready? Join me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this time of worship and fun and games, Lord, that we can come together and just celebrate and worship you. Lord, thank you for the reminder that in the scary, tough times, you are our hope and our future. You give us strength and courage, and you fill our hearts with love to share with others in their scary times, Lord. For these kids, Lord, if they need some courage, Lord, I ask that you pour it out onto them, that you make them strong, Lord, and that you hold them when that they are scared, Lord. You wrap your arms around them and give one big tight squeeze. I pray for our church family, for those that are going through some tough times, Lord, I ask that you pour your blessing out onto them and fill their hearts with love to overflowing, that we may share it and pass it on to those in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our communities, Lord. I thank you for these kids and their families, for the time they have set aside to worship, and I ask, Lord, that you be with us as we go into our future with hopes and plans, Lord, to prosper and to flourish and to grow into amazing children of you. In your holy and precious name I pray, amen. 
I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of the week. And if you're ready to come see us back here in FBC Kids, we are here Sunday mornings at 9.30. We've got some fun stuff going on. We're in our series called Unbelievable. We're having an unbelievable time up here. And you can see us on Facebook and on YouTube. We've got some extra stuff on Facebook if you want to keep track with us. Don't worry, you can keep working on your memory verse. It's right here at the end. And I'll post a picture on our Facebook group. So maybe you could print it at home. Let me know if you want a magnet. I can send it through the mail. Like I said, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And I'll see you later. Bye.